Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. Today we're going to talk a little bit about saving money and, there we go, saving money and living healthier. As you may or may not know, I didn't talk about this in my introduction, I'm a chiropractor. So this is what I deal with on a daily basis is giving people their health back. But in order to understand what health is and how we can have more of it and how we might even save money getting to there, we first have to understand what health is and how the current system works. Because we can all agree that what we're doing in the United States and Western society in general isn't working out that well. When you consider that, I'm trying to remember the numbers here, when you consider that 70 something, I think it's 73% of bankruptcies in the United States are due to healthcare costs. Greater than 85% of those bankruptcies had insurance, full insurance coverage. So it's not a problem of access to care. It's not a problem of being able to pay for it. It's a problem with what the care is doing. See, most people in Western society, <laughs> have a very simple conception of what health is all about. It's either sick or well. If I feel good, then I must be healthy. And if I feel sick, then I must be sick. Or if I feel bad, I must be sick. But two great examples blow this out of the water. Feeling sick. Anyone had food poisoning? Right. Who wants to go through it again? <laughs> Nobody, right? Food poisoning is one of the worst things that we can experience physically in our bodies. But if there's toxin, if there's poison in the body, what's the best thing the body can do? Get rid of it, right? So food poisoning, while it feels terrible, is actually, get this, a perfect expression of health, given the circumstances. Flip side, 80% of people in America with heart disease have no idea until they drop from a heart attack. So they feel fine one day but they're very sick the next. We understand it was an underlying process for years before they could actually feel it. So how we feel is actually a really terrible indicator of how we're actually functioning. And the numbers show it. Just to the US economy, this is not including cost of healthcare in the United States because that's in the trillions of dollars. But just the US economy, $576 billion are lost every year in the U.S. economy because of sick and, sickness and poor health. That breaks down a few different ways. $117 billion of those dollars is just for wage replacement. That's paying sick days. That's paying for all of these different things that are covered in like workman's comp and stuff like that. An even bigger number, $227 billion is just for lost productivity, whether the person is on the job or not on the job. That money is lost because if they're not there, obviously they're not completing their work. And if they are there, they're not completing it as well as they could be. They're not working at their full efficiency and effect. And the bigger one, 200 and it is 200. It's the next one. It's the next one. It's 235 billion, I think, is. There we go. 232. I was almost there. 232 billion just in direct cost of treatment. That's insurance coverage through the work and whatnot, like that. So it was 500 and something, 70 something billion, 76? 576 billion dollars cost, direct cost to the U.S. economy each year, and I wrote it down on my hand, that's almost as much as this year's national deficit. The federal national deficit is at $649 billion this year, $576. So we almost are wasting that much money on lost productivity due to um, health care. And again, it's because most people, and for better or worse, the allopathic system works in a sick or well model. If you have this symptom, you get this diagnosis and you get this treatment for it. And most of the time, that's I feel bad, 
We're going to call it this, and I'm going to take something to feel good again. Sometimes that helps actually fix what's causing the feeling. Most of the time it doesn't. Think of, for example, painkillers. One of the most widely used substances in the United States in particular. Painkillers covers up the pain. It does nothing to actually fix the thing that's causing the pain. I want to propose that there's a better way. That there's a better way to look at our health and to actually deal with our health. And there's some really exciting research that shows that. There was a seven year study done back, it was 92 to 99 and there was a follow up 99 to 2002. So there was actually 10 years worth of research on this. But the first seven year study is what I'm citing here. The seven year study looked at about 700,000 people in, yeah, 700,000 people in Blue Cross Blue Shield in the Midwest of the United States who had chiropractic coverage included in their insurance coverage. It was about a million people who didn't. They compared the two groups and some really cool comparisons came up. The chiropractic group versus the medical group. They had 60% fewer hospital admissions and days spent in the hospital. They had 62% fewer outpatient surgeries and procedures. And here's the big one. They saved over 85% on pharmaceutical costs and drugs. Cover up the symptom or fix the problem. That's where chiropractic comes in. And that's why I do what I do. Chiropractic is about life, expressing more life. If there's a dimmer switch on your body's ability to function, your body cannot be as healthy as it can be. My job is to find that dimmer switch, turn it back up to 100%, and allow you to live the life that God designed you to live. It's Toastmaster.